fighting over towns is an integral part of Steel Division. When you're attacking or defending, you have a lucrative points to take because they have highly defensible buildings and a lot of good cover. This video is a guide or real strategy tips to effectively attack and defend towns. So let's get right into it, shall we? To get started, you have four types of infantry and it's usual to know how to use them effectively. So first up you got are your line infantry such as riflemen or panzer grenadiers. These should be the backbone of your force. They're very plentiful in numbers in terms of units and in terms of how many cards you can get of them. And you just want a lot of them. They should be the majority of your infantry force. They're usually pretty good at most rows and sometimes they come with anti-tank weapons. So they are jack of all trades, master of none. Then you got your machine gun teams, whether it's a dedicated tripod MG or just a five man squad of two LMGs. These guys should be behind your initial infantry assault and given covering and suppressive fire. They are a little bit weaker in terms of HP, but if you can get line of sight on the enemy, these guys will mow them down with their high rate of fire machine guns. Then you have your assault infantry. They usually have some sort of 100 meter dedicated anti-infantry weapon such as HE grenades or flamethrowers. You want to get these guys very close to the enemy forces so they can use their weapons of mass destruction. Now I'd also recommend turning off the rifles of these units so when you attack move they don't stop 300 meters away from the unit but instead move all the way 100 meters and use their more effective weaponry. And then you got your leader units and they are extremely bloody important to make your infantry an effective fighting force run inside a town. They don't just increase your infantry effectiveness by one star but it also make it so your guys take half the suppressive damage that they would otherwise meaning they can move up faster without having to stop because they're scared of a puny machine gun from far away. I mentioned this tip in my other tip video, but I think it needs to be mentioned again. Artillery is so, so bloody important for attacking or defending towns. As you can see here, both sides are using artillery pieces extensively, and they're using them to pin down machine guns, pin down enemy artillery, and it's such a useful tool. Because they're not just for killing enemy infantry. Heck, the killing isn't even right out good. What makes them good is the ability to pin them down. Because a pin down infantry guy is not going to be able to do too much. And once they're pinned down, you can easily move up and finish them off. So, if you're attacking a town, always, 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 always have some sort of artillery piece with you. They pay themselves off tenfold when used correctly. And speaking of artillery, you don't have to drop high explosive shells all the time. Smoke is also a very valuable option and very useful when using them to attack. In this example, we got two stormtrooper squads and they want to assault this machine gun building. Let's just pretend these guys are the enemy. And also, there's a stunk back here giving fire support. If we just move them up theoretically, they're going to get lit up by the stunk and they're going to get lit up by MG42 before we even get into the building. So smoke artillery will be one of our best ways to deal with this situation. Now there are two ways we could do smoke artillery. Let's say for the stug, we could just drop smoke right on top of it. Now that will blind the stug of course, but the major problem is, is that once the smoke actually lands, and oh no, he can't see. Whatever sound he do. Well, because he's so far away, he can just move forward. And now we have sight once again. So doing that isn't the best course of action. Instead, you want to try and smoke rather line of sight. You can you can block it. So free smoke here, for example. As we wait for him to fire, Stug won't be able to reposition to give line of fire. You will have to move all the way around the flank. So our Stormtrooper squads can now start moving up, but there's still a machine gun here. And in this scenario, we would just want to drop smoke directly on the machine gun, because they're not going to be able to move out fast enough to gain line of sight. And if they do, out in the open, the SS squads will be able to knock them out. And also, some infantry, such as these SS Stormtroopers, do have smoke grenades, and make sure to make good use of them too. So, just use smoke and use it everywhere, because it is a fantastic tool 
So here I want to show an actual example of smoke being useful within a match. So I got quite a lot of infantry up here and I need to attack his town. But the problem is he's got fire support tanks and half tracks and other infantry guys. Yeah, raw shoot my guys as they go up the road to try and attack. So I got some mortars in the back line as you can see and they are just pounding away with the smoke and I fire a lot of bloody smoke. And it blocks the line of sight. The machine guns can no longer see. And it's going to give me free reign to move up and attack. And it's not going to be moving back half track. Which is very silly. Because the foul shaker is just going to be able to get close. And pop it with fan panda fouls. Now I don't just stop here. I continue smoking ahead of where I want to attack. And... He's going to be smart with his tanks. He's going to be forced to pull them back because he doesn't want to get too close to the smoke. And before you know it, he's been driven back quite a bit. The rest of the forces and reinforcements are coming in. I'm attacking around the side. And I'm just continuing the smoke and fire to block line of sight. And he is just going to pull out completely. Knowing that, well, it's a bit too dangerous to get close to attack. And that right here, I think, is a very good example of how to use smoke. Don't just stop once you got to the place you do, but keep on smoking ahead of where you want to go to do this nice, I, I say, creeping barrage, essentially, of smoke. Another habit that you should try to do is keep your infantry inside the town and not around the outskirts. In this example, we got this place under our control, the factory, and over here are some nasty, nasty baddies, but for some reason they're blue. And we've got machine gun squad. Now it makes a lot of sense to have this heavy machine gun squad around the outskirts of the town. It has a bloody machine gun. If these guys move up, they're going to get mowed down. They're in the open field. They're pretty easy kills. But in most cases, it's not a good idea. Because also, tanks such as his fire support Sherman can shoot at these guys easily. And well, a machine gun against a tank is not going to win so it's much better to pull these guys back and let the enemy infantry get close inside the town where the tank can't give cover and fire and let your riflemen mow them down such as yes this is more of an exaggerated example but it's a very good idea to bring vehicles into a town. For example, a Red Bull player here is a Firefly, a Boyta Cromwell, and a Half Track inside of his town. And he really does have him inside. The Half Track is right on the road and it's given good cover and fire. And as you can see, all the Blue Four guys are just getting pinned down and destroyed. Because you've got to remember the longest range AT weapon for Blue Force is 200 meters for the Piao Bazooka, and for Red Force, 250 meters of a dedicated Panzer Track team. But you also got to be careful because if you do, yes you're going to get exposed and lose your vehicle very easily. Fortunately for James Solo here, he is going to keep it alive just barely. So, when using vehicles inside town, make sure to have infantry always in front of you. And also as well, if you are attacking a town, you need, you absolutely need, some sort of anti-tank option inside here. Whether it's Piat Squad or some proper bloody tanks. Because if you have none of that, when you're attacking a town, well, if they bring up just one half-track and you have no AT weapons, that half-track is going to mess up your entire force and there's nothing you can do about it. And if you really don't have any AT weapons, just try to pin down a half-track or whatever comes in of artillery. And the last thing I want to talk about is presence. And I'm not talking about presence inside the town, but outside of it. Because you can have a town as nice a strength as strong point under your control but if you get flanked around like this for example these guys ain't exactly going to be useful and the problem with really holding towns in this game compared to war game is that you don't really have any long range infantry weapons it's usually a good idea to maybe bring an AT gun or two to snipe enemy tanks but that's really it so if you are not able to hold the flanks of the town that you are holding this can happen and you do not want that to happen because in the end of the day it's better to hold the flanks and just continue a fight or even lose the town 
yen to allow a penetration like this to happen and towns as important as they are they're not the be all end all strategic points yet you need to have they're very useful they're very good to have under your control but as we see here redfall they're not even going to bother to attack they're just going to push right through this exposed flank and gain a lot of ground and once again it's all about map control not about holding a specific area and i hope this guide has been useful to you it's a pretty general guide i will admit there's definitely more advanced topics to talk about but i just wanted to keep it nice and brief and so this has been another angry video i hope you guys enjoyed the video and usual please just take it easy